What separates Icon boats from the rest? Is it the styling? Is it the functionality? Is it the ride? We've been told we're the best built boat in the market. We put together the best team in the industry, inside the factory and out in the field. From the legacy of Hydra Sports to the creative ingenuity of HCB, it's a collaboration of years of experience. This is what we're made of. I'm Chuck Pippen with Icon Boats. I've traded in my polarized glasses this week for a pair of safety glasses, and I'm up here at the Icon plant with the head of engineering, Andrew Clements, who's going to help us go through our boat, show you why our boats are different, how they're built. We have our machine room, better known as the battery compartment to bass fishermen, and our transom. And when, when we were designing this, Andrew, what was the thought concept with the layout of the machine room? So we really started just kind of benchmarking other boats that were out in the market, looking at the different arrangements they had, not only what they included in this area, but how you got to it. So the deck layout, what, what the size of the hatch, the orientation, did it fold in, did it fold aft? We went through all that. Then we started looking at all the components that a bass fisherman needs, you know, access to your charger, your power pole pumps, bilge pumps, the battery layout, and our electrical panel. And we just tried to figure out the best way to arrange it that kept great access for the fishermen. When they're out on the water and they need to get at something, they can get to it quickly for maintenance, uh, potentially if they have any troubleshooting. So we went through a lot of different layouts to try to figure out how to make that work the best. Uh, and this is the solution that we came up with. It gives you clean battery access, access to the pumps. When you open the lid, your battery charges right there. Um, yep. Everything's pretty much convenient for you. Shallow water anchors, our power pole pumps, where, where, are those, where are those pumps installed? So we have a space right back here. Um, you can still fit three trolling batteries, even though you only see two in this picture. You can fit a third battery in this space and that still leaves enough area right here to mount your shallow water anchor pumps. Here's something I use a lot too is our fish IV system, which that'll be another video, but that's easily accessible. Getting at your charger, seeing your charger, yep. you know, seeing the lights on it when I plug, I always check that when I plug it in. And those wing style lids that are part of our deck system, everybody loves that because there's, there's other boat manufacturers where the, the lids open this way. And when you're in the boat on the water, you can't, you're, you're doing a straddling deal to get at it. Or the ones that, that open this way, if you're on the trailer or at a dock trying to work on it sometimes and you're behind the boat. So that was all great thought. So now that we've covered our machine room or battery compartment that's sitting on top of our liner, what, what's the unique about our stringer system and so, our transom? Yeah, I mean, we could start with the transom. That's another aspect, again, looking at what else is in the market, what we do on bigger boats as well. So we took some of those concepts that we use uh, just from our center consoles and kind of brought that engineering to this area. So we have a very robust transom. Not only is the outer shell of the hull fiberglass, the liner itself is fiberglass. These are both reinforced with layers of woven quadrax fiberglass. And then in between that, we have an inch and a half thick Kusa Blue Water transom. It's a 26 pound density. And these are bonded all together. So you can see right here, this is the meat of the boat. And then we have these big, strong knees that help distribute that load down into the rest of the stringer. And these, these 250 to 300 horsepower four-stroke engines, the average weight on those is about 500 pounds nowadays. Yeah, five those, to 600 pounds. Five to 600 pounds. That, that Kusa Blue 26, is that commonly used in the bass boat industry or is that something? I mean, it's used in the marine industry. I don't know what everyone has in their transom, but it's something that we use on big boats. It's something that we use right in this application because it's, it's a very uh, robust piece. Yeah. You know, it's got, it's, it's fiberglass woven into the material, so. We've talked about the design, why we, why we chose the design for ease of access and that type of stuff and the materials that we use. What were some of the obstacles that we had to overcome when choosing this design? You know, the biggest obstacle is kind of the problem that you always face in marine design, which is how do you cram the 10 pounds of stuff you need to fit in a five pound bag. Uh, but the other challenge we had is in this area of the boat, to meet the level flotation requirements that we wanted to achieve, you had to have enough buoyancy back here to support that five to 600 pound engine that we were talking about. So that's what these are all around the boat, our buoyancy chambers. 
they also helped create the, the mounting surfaces that we wanted to have for our equipment. So right. it was a bit of a challenge to figure out because you're trying to maximize your buoyancy space, but also maximize your storage space in your layout. So in the first part of the video, we briefly mentioned our fully finished liner. Here we're standing in front of a big chunk of the front half of our boat. And you'll see our fully finished liner. Why did we choose to implement this versus what some of our competitors do? Liners like this that you integrate as a stringer and a liner, that's something that's more common you see on bigger center consoles. Actually, some of the HCBs have this. Mm -hmm. So that's part of where this came from. But the two biggest advantages that we get with this setup is you're able to maximize your storage area. As you can see, these are huge storage spaces. We're able to hide our, uh, our flotation foam that we use to make sure we meet our uh, level flotation requirements. And the other part about these big deep stringers, that provides a lot of structure up here in the bow where you get a lot of wave impacts. It helps distribute that load and it gives us good strong connections to the deck. The deck is a big open space and has a lot of hatches in it, so it of itself needs some support. So we're able to make that bond line right along these stringers. So all the flotation from front to back is sealed, essentially, instead of being exposed. Yeah, it's all sealed and it's all actually in the hull. So the process, when we infuse the hull, we bring it over and we'll actually set the liner. We glue that, bond those two pieces together, and then we bring a liner press on top of that and we'll foam it in place. So all that foam is injected here, so it keeps it clean. So down the road, you're not dealing with pieces of flotation foam that you find in your bilge or other areas. Yeah. So we have a unique hull design that a lot of your common angler might not recognize. Can you explain how it's different from some other manufacturers? Our experience really, a lot of the engineers on this project started out going to the Brent Butler School of Bass Boat Driving because we're all novices. So we had to go learn what that was like. And a lot of the, from, from my perspective, not having run a bass boat before, it can be intimidating when you're at wide open throttle and you're trying to figure out how to correct that behavior where the boat wants to start to chine walk. And the other part you get to is when you're at those higher speeds and you come across wake that you're not anticipating, you can have a really strong impact. So we looked at some of the characteristics of offshore hulls and we made the front, the entry really is what we would call it, the entry section of the bow set up best to handle rough waves. And then we transitioned back to the running surface. And that's where you get some of the nuance of our design where we help maintain the, the stability that we have when you're running wide open throttle in our boat. That's kind of what I like about our company is we have a, a whole team of engineers from many different backgrounds. It wasn't just a bunch of bass boat engineers that came together to build another bass boat. What are some of the backgrounds of some of our engineers? Like where did they come from? We, we do have a lot of marine experience, but they come from ranging uh, large center consoles, large luxury yachts, uh, commercial vessels, high performance military vessels. There's a range of backgrounds that we have. And that really kind of helped us give us different perspectives on how to solve the problems that we were trying to solve with our hull design. So we talked about our machine room and our transom and the hull design and the fully finished liner and the materials that we used. What was the, how long did this take to get to this point? It was about, I'd say about a three year process between when we first started benchmarking and looking at what the market had to offer and then establish the goals we wanted to achieve. And you know, a lot of that was, we did some research. We even experimented a little bit with CFD, which is computational fluid dynamics, just to look at analyzing the hull. And then really the process kicked off once we settled on what we wanted, created that 3D model and had a temporary hull mold made. We built our, what we call a mule boat. And then that was a process of months of iterating through fine tuning different areas of the hull just learning from it, seeing when we make this change, how does the boat respond? We would study film from when we were out on the lake, lots of on the water testing. And after months of going through that, we felt like we've achieved our goal. Then we went back to full production tooling design. So I think we covered our transom and our machine room, why we chose the whole design that we chose, how we came up with that, everything that went into it, our flotation and our fully finished liner. This is just a small part of how our boats are built. Thanks for watching. Check out these next videos to see how the rest of it's built.